Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. Unsurprisingly, our huge brain, Giga IQ, Alhaitham is quite a complex character. In this video, we'll be taking a deepish dive into how we can min-max some of his damage output through combos. Now I need to open up this video by clearly stating that this video is far from conclusive. There are a ton of options for Al Haytham when it comes to his combo game. My findings in this video only reflect a fraction of what he can do. However, the information in this video was enough for me to feel comfortable in recommending a few main combos for Al Haytham. So we'll be diving into this with frame data and more. Chosen. Let's first talk about Al Haytham's elemental skill. Now this isn't going to be a guide on the most basic parts of his kit. For that, I recommend either my Constellation Zero showcase or my full guide video on Al Haytham. More so, this video is focused on the slightly less obvious parts of his kit. Al Haytham's elemental skill can instantly animation cancel any part of his normal attack stream. <laughs> However, Al Haytham's elemental skill cannot animation cancel his charge attack, and knowing this will help you avoid or at least mentally prepare you for some slight inconsistencies when you try to use his elemental skill. Holding his elemental skill at all and even angling it down at the ground will actually still lead to a plunge attack. <laughs> The next detail about Al Haytham's elemental skill is that if you do the tap version and then use a charge attack, you will get a wave of two mirrors and then a wave of three mirror attacks. However, if you do the hold version into the air and then your plunge attack hits an enemy, Al Haytham will gain the third mirror through his plunge attack and then immediately do a three mirror wave attack instead of a two mirror wave attack from his tappy and then charge attack. The next super omega giga brained advanced tech is the Q swap tech. Al Haytham is able to swap off, then swap back on, and still catch the mirrors his elemental burst generates. Alhatham's mirrors generated from his burst don't spawn until roughly 3.5 seconds from when you press his burst button. And because Alhatham is able to swap out roughly 1.5-ish seconds after he starts his burst, this gives you roughly 2 seconds, minus ping times 2 since each swap is based on ping plus a few frames, of time to do stuff with another character. Yeah, that's right, Alhatham is a character that is quite ping dependent to maximize. And just because I'm able to do a swap with a 110-ish ping doesn't mean that you'll be able to, especially if you have 200 to 300 ping. However, if you have like 10 to 20 ping, you'll be able to do more than what I'm able to in this video. So yeah, you might be able to do more or less or not even swap at all depending on your ping. Now with that out of the way, what are some useful things you can do with this Q-Swap tech? Pretty much most things that take around a second to execute. Some useful examples are Traveler's Burst, Traveler's Elemental Skill to Battery Alhatham, and Kuki's Elemental Skill, especially if Kuki has the Instructors equipped as this allows for better uptime on the Instructors buff. Anyway, I'm not going to go over every possible thing that you can do by swapping, but these are just a few examples of stuff that you can do. Cool. Phew, and we're just getting started with all this widespread information. So I hope you don't feel too overloaded yet. And for more terrible jokes that barely even count as puns, gently click that subscribe button. Let's quicken the process of getting this channel to 500,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Next, it's time to understand what are his best normal attack strings. The frame counts aren't perfect since I only did each string roughly six times and took the best one for each, but it's good enough to get a decent idea, so please take everything here with a giant grain of salt. Anyway, the first thing that stands out is that his N5 combo is one of the worst options for his normal attack DPS on this chart. 
Ahitham is heavily encouraged to do many fast attacks due to the way spread works, and I think we can all tell how slow his N5 is. It's a little fallacious to count fractions of spreads, but if we're repeating these strings over and over, then the number of spreads will converge to these fractions. Anyway, if you've got some stamina to dash around, both N3D and N4D increase his basic attack DPS by a small amount. Now once we factor in charge attacks, it's a bit more noticeable of a damage bump, with N1C, N2C, and N3C all performing pretty similarly to each other. I've even included my initial findings for using his holy to do a plunge attack. Hey, editing I went to lose here. Upon some further testing, I realized that plunge attacks actually do not share ICDs with his normals and charge attacks, and this gives you an entire free spread when you hit an enemy with a plunge attack, which actually makes them quite good. So now that we know all this, let's take a look at how we can incorporate some of this info into our gameplay. Let's start off with the most Oonga Boonga way to play him as an on-field 3 mirror carry. And interestingly, with this rotation, we actually only end up with 5 3 mirror projection attacks. This is due to unoptimized timings of triggering the projection attacks due to the normal attack strings that we're using. Regardless of its imperfections, the above combo is a great starting point and is probably the easiest option that Alhatham has. Next, let's try optimizing this just a little bit with some dash cancels to avoid his really slow N5. The DPS gain here is quite modest at only around 4%. What made this gain some DPS was the tighter timings for activating his projection attacks, thus allowing for the 6th projection attack to be a 3 mirror version, as well as for the 6th projection attack to hit sooner, which of course increases your DPS. For this next combo, let's incorporate the Q swap tech and refresh the 3 mirrors the first time with his charge attacks. We're able to further optimize his combo with the Q-Swap tech in this example by using Traveler's elemental skill to battery Alhatham. Also, his charge attacks do a bit more DPS, so spamming them netted us roughly 20,000 more damage from his basic attacks, leading to a 7% increase in DPS in comparison to his Oonga Boonga combo. And our last combo ups the ante even more. The last thing we're missing is a Flash E plunge attack. There we go, somehow this tightened the timings even more and trimmed off nearly an entire second off his rotation for activating 6 mirror projection attacks. And that's one of the main reasons why I said at the beginning that my combos aren't fully optimized. I'm sure there are better ways to tighten mirror projection attacks to do even more DPS. So yeah, in terms of 3 mirror uptime combos, honestly if you just follow the golden rule of refreshing his 3 mirrors every 2 projection attacks, you'll be just fine. While sure we did squeeze out a bit of extra damage and overall DPS, this optimization is far smaller than many other characters, and if you're more of a casual player I wouldn't sweat too much over this. But for those that like to min-max, this is a decent starting place for figuring out your perfect 3 mirror combos. Dunkle. We also have some quick swap options for Alhatham as well. I'm not going to break it down as meticulously as the previous one, but I'm going to show you four examples. We have the option of staying on field for two projection attacks or just to do one projection attack and then immediately use his burst.
We also have the option of tapping E or holding E. I personally like the hold E version because upon landing your plunge, you automatically do a three mirror projection attack. These low field time combos do have much higher DPS and have way higher DPS for field time because Alhatham can swap off over 3 seconds prior to his elemental burst finishing, thus allowing your teammates to start dishing out damage while Alhatham's burst is still doing damage. However, as we can see, the overall damage Alhatham puts out in a rotation is much lower and of course you'll have a lot less dendro application and of course you're going to have much more burst uptime issues due to the energy management on this team. However, this is still good information to know for if you just want Alhatham to do quite a lot of damage and then perhaps swap to another DPS character that you might have on the team. One more quick note about his combos, many of these combos are weapon dependent. For example, with both either a signature weapon, the lighter Follier incision, or the Hironga Paku, you're better off spamming some normal attack strings instead of his charge attacks, so do take into consideration the weapon you're using as well. Well, I'm not sure how clear this video was, nor am I sure how optimized my combos are, but I think this is a decent starting point for us to further experiment with the Art of Light Refraction in Alhatham's kit. As we can see, optimizing Alhatham's combos don't really lead to huge gains like some other characters, but at the very least, we can reflect upon what we've learned to squeeze a bit more damage out of our favorite scholar. Let me know what combos you guys are utilizing and any combos you might recommend down in the comments below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.